Hi, it's Bernie Gomak on Sunday. And if you're watching this on YouTube.com stroke top gold, you're seeing the last great sunset of October. You're listening to me on audioboo.fm slash top gold. You are listening to me in rainy Ireland as we look over the FT weekend, Sunday Business Post, and the Nationalist and the Sunday Times newspapers of note in my life as an American in Ireland. The FT weekend warns of the Greek economy collapsing, fuel poverty closing in on the Queen, and other things of interest inside. My take on the FT concerns things like the French dilemma. Hugh Carnegie in Paris points out that the Eurozone Financial Stability Rescue Fund and the recapitalization required, in France's case, has a lot of parallels to Ireland. France may need to draw a line under its weak capital position for its major banks, and if it doesn't, Moody's or Standards and Poor's may downgrade French sovereign debt. Exciting times ahead this week. Steve Jobs. Steve pledged to destroy Google's smartphone, Joseph Men writes from San Francisco. Now I'm getting Steve Jobs' official biography here tomorrow onto my little Kindle. And interesting points of view here that are leaking to all the major papers and to the Associated Press. The depth of feeling on Steve's part should result in a big clash between Google and Apple in the months ahead. Stand by for that. And on the back page of the Financial Times, Groupon, some unusual financial dealings there. I circled this because, well, on one hand it might reflect impressive cost control, on the other hand, expense liquidation, dropping things like marketing expenses, administrative expenses down to the floor, below the floor, to the basement. Same thing's happening where I live and work. Here's the front of the Sunday Business Post, Ireland's financial, economical, political newspaper. Sean Gallagher's on his son. Commanding lead, probably going to win the presidency. That's what the, the poll says. Pat Leahy, the political editor, points out that Gallagher stands at 40. Michael D. Higgins at 26%. Between the two of them, it's a two-man race. Ireland won't follow Greece, says Cliff Taylor and Pat Leahy. A report leaked this weekend from the EU, the ECB. IMF Troika warned the Greek financial outlook is dire and that even if Greeks lenders accepted a 50% discount, it no still the country would still need a gigantic rescue package. Might need better phones too. Here's a review of the Sony Ericsson Live with Walkman that Adrian Weckler does. Calls it one of the best mid-tier models you'd get in the phone. Here's a good review of jobs, real jobs, that might be available for creatives in Ireland. Dick O'Brien, the technology correspondent for Sunday Business Post, points out that Forfoss says Ireland has the potential to more than double its employment in the games industry to 4,500 people if, if progressive and digitally advanced business environment is brought to bear in Ireland. That's the task. I wonder if Fianna Gael, the government's up to it. Claire FM's ready to make the digital transition in style, says Siobhan Brett. Liam O'Shea is smiling behind the control pan panels, saying that the station's ready to broadcast digitally to its listeners. Tourism Ireland, filming digitally. Mark Henry, the Central Marketing Director, Neil Gibbons, Chief Executive, looking at Robbie Ryan, the Director of Photography for an ad campaign shoot, bringing all kinds of new, unique tourism offerings from Ireland to unsuspecting punters around the world. Underway.ie is our little attempt at that. Something we're trying to do to say you can walk casual even in the rain and enjoy it, especially if you're an American. O2, location, 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 smiling face of Eugene Mitchell from Telefonic O2. Brands can use this texting service, so you get a text when you're near something with a special offer. The text knows where you are. The mask knows where you are. And we're down in Columbia right now in a time shift, pointing out the front page story of the Nationalist is all about saving the barracks. Austerity is a big topic. The local paper, The Nationalist, has a headline that uh, affected me yesterday. Huge turnout expected for Clonmel March to save the barracks. Local man, Gerald Manny, is actually going to read or gives his opinion on it. Gerald, what's, what's your take? Well, my take is um, that there's an overall emphasis on um, how savings is being made in the Defence Forces. Um, Deputy Hayes has said the pressure to close Kicking Barracks 
along with others in Mullingarra, Castlebar and elsewhere, was coming from Defence Forces Chiefs who in turn were getting pressure from government departments to uh, cut back in any way they could. Um, many of the local politicians are getting involved at various angles to try and save their own barracks because in the long run they're saving votes. And that's um, a story, it's austerity, it's vote taking, vote getting, yeah. and it's a story that's going to resonate throughout all of Ireland. Okay, in other news. Thank you, Chair. Campaigners met yesterday in the rain with some of the TDs and voiced their opinion about closing the barracks. Sunday Times. I got the, the newspaper here for the recipes that work. We're going to do baked apples later on the day. Front page stories about Gaddafi, the IMF, Sean Gallagher going to win the presidency. Same numbers, basically the same numbers, different poll. Check back next week for the result. It won't be one that's good for Fianna Foyle. Business and money inside the Sunday Times. Point the successful results for Wallace and Gromit and Sean the Sheep. Matt Goodman has a story about Ardman on animation. 68% rise in sales. Good on you, Ardman. I'm going to show that in the um, digital design course where I work in LIT, the Limerick Institute of Technology, where I'm hoping that a gaff won't end my career. Gabriella Monahan points out that organizational folklore says that you can easily become synonymous with certain kind of behavior, like me, the ranting American. I know there's, there's guys from LIT listening to me now, and give me a big hug when you see me. Bring me back in to the fold. Regional C Corps and finalists, finalists are announced. Intertrade Ireland has an all Ireland competition. Whittling down Northern Irish, Munster, Dublin, Connick and Leinster regional finalists. The Munster regionals, actually I don't know any of these guys. ALR Innovations, Data Grid, Instidia, Sugar Coal, Working Analytics, Air Dryer Systems. I'm going to have to meet them. Looking good in Munster. Looking good on my Kindle. Hey, that's what Owen Purcell would say. In his Think Tank story, New Ideas for the 21st Century. Read it and weep, says Owen, for the booksellers. I like, and I circled this one point here, print books will shrink in market share, but there'll be higher value for the print books. I mean, the stuff that I buy, I buy the books that are behind things like Saving Private Ryan and Band of Brothers, and I also spend 15 to 20 euro on those moleskinnies. Hey, I'm headed away for part of the week, bringing you some exciting news from London. Let's check up on www.insideview.ie as I move. I'll be taking over voice activated controls to my Android phone. Use the Sony Ericsson Xperia Arc over in London with Nokia World with the Z7. I love it. And I've got my iPod Touch restored. You can see the results online there. Sinking out. Okay, rainy day here in Cashel. Have a quick look at the rock down the way. If you want to catch up with better pictures on sunny days, the place to go is flickr.com stroke photos Struck Irish eyes. If you want to follow me on Twitter, it's Top Gold. From Rainy Cashel, it's Bernie Goldbach, the American. Saying thanks a million for watching and listening. Bye for now.